The Gen 9 competitive singles metagame is in an interesting state right now. With the recent Curum and Gliscor suspect votes resulting in no ban, it seems like the majority of the active player base is happy with the state of the game right now, and is against the idea of anything getting banned or changed. And I have noticed that the metagame is shifting quite a bit, with people adapting to popular threats or just innovating with new ideas in interesting ways. There are some currently ongoing tournaments for Gen 9 OU, and I have noticed some pretty interesting Pokemon showing up in them. These aren't just one-off instances either. There are multiple examples of the same seemingly low tier Pokemon being used in tournaments with pretty impressive results. Could this be indicative of a new trend on the horizon? Let's take a look at some of these interesting Pokemon that seem to be winning in tournaments right now, and why these unique Pokemon appear to be growing in popularity. Subscribe to the channel quickly, or I will throw the Pokemon Slugma into the vast ocean. He cannot swim. Thank you. The most interesting and in my opinion the coolest rising star of the OU Premier League tournament that's currently ongoing is probably Galarian Weezing. This thing has been used quite a lot, a total of eight times throughout the tournament with a pretty good win rate too, six wins and two losses. Positive win rate for Galarian Weezing, it's doing very well. Galarian Weezing is ranked RU in Gen 9, so pretty low tier, but it still has quite a bit going for it. With a poison fairy typing, pretty nice defensive typing there, and also three really good choices for abilities. Levitate, which offers ground immunity, Misty Surge, which creates Misty Terrain on switch in, and most unique of all, Neutralizing Gas, which actually cancels out the effects of other abilities. And this seems to be the real appeal of using Weezing Gala in the Gen 9 OU metagame, because cancelling out abilities is damn powerful against enemies like Goldengo, Garganical, even the occasional Hatterene. There's a lot of really strong abilities in Gen 9 that are metagame defining and Galarian Weezing is able to just ignore them all, and it has some pretty good tools to take advantage of those abilities being disabled. First of all, Weezing Galar has Defog, which is significant in Gen 9. This wouldn't be that big of a deal, you know, last gen or the gen before, but in Gen 9, hazard removal seems to be incredibly scarce. The only OU ranked Defog user is Corviknight. There are some Rapid Spinners, Great Task Iron Treads, but hazard removal is scarce. If you search for Defog in the team builder, you'll be surprised to see that there's barely anything. Some people were using Talonflame back in the day, just because it's a Defogger with decent typing that can heal up and has flame body and stuff. So that was at least an okay option, but now people are turning to a new possibility for a Defogger, Galarian Weezing. And Defog users have been facing a problem in Gen 9, which is Goldengo. Goldengo is able to block Defog with its ability Good as Gold, which blocks all status moves. And that includes Defog, which counts as a status but of course galarian wheezing's neutralizing gas disables good as gold and allows galarian wheezing to just defog against goldengo and that's a pretty massive boon for galarian wheezing isn't it the only other pokemon that can do this i think is holucha who has mold breaker and defog but holucha is not as good defensively as galarian wheezing is this thing has actual defensive value it's a little bit tough that you have to lose levitate to be able to run neutralizing gas because being ground weak is a big problem in a world so dominated by more and more ground types great tusk iron treads gliscor landorus Therian, etc but Weezing Galar still has good defensive entry points against a lot of things. The most notable is probably Zamazenta, who is very popular right now, very good right now. Weezing Galar has a times four fighting resistance and a dark resistance. And Zamazenta, of course, relies heavily on body press and crunch for its damage. So Galarian Weezing is a good Zamazenta switch in. And upon switching in, it can do stuff. It can defog safely. It can also Will-O-Wisp against Goldengo. And Garganical, mind you, because you will disable the ability Purifying Salt too, which is very good. And access to the Stab Fairy type attack Strange Steam is also nice. That allows you to offensively check Zamazenta as well. Weezing Galar is also pretty nice against Iron Valiant. You've got Fighting Resistance and Fairy Resistance, so you're not worried about the Stab. And you can probably shrug off options like Knock Off and Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt and other coverage well enough. The occasional Psy Shock will hit you pretty hard, but that doesn't feel that popular these days. And even then, they'll have to hit it as you're coming in on a predict. Because if they click Psy Shock against you, they're probably just going to faint to your follow-up Strange Steam. So pretty damn good against Iron Valiant. Galarian Weezing's biggest drawback is probably its lack of sustain, but most of these players are running boots on it, so it's at least hazard immune temporarily until it gets knocked off. 
and it has pain split at least for some form of healing. Galarian Weezing also has access to Toxic Spikes if it wants another way to take advantage of its defensive switch in. And although Weezing Galar has its defensive shortcomings, if you pair it with another bulky ground type that can handle great tasks like Lander Aesthirian, all of a sudden you're getting all the benefits of Lander Aesthirian, plus a form of hazard removal, a check to Zamazenta. It's actually a pretty strong defensive core, offers a lot of utility, and I think this has a lot of potential for in the future of Gen 9. This is a very consistent hazard remover. Maybe even more so than Great Tusk, because Great Tusk even struggles to rapid spin into Goldengo sometimes if they have a balloon because they're immune to rapid spin. But this can just defog into Goldengo and it has other defensive applications that are really useful. Neutralizing Gas has other ways to be useful too. It cancels out Protosynthesis and Quark Drive and offensive abilities. Maybe you're facing like a Crawdaunt and you just get rid of Adaptability or something and they're doing no damage now. This is one of those things where I'm kind of like, how did nobody think of this before? Probably it has been used a little bit here and there, but seems like in this particular tournament, it's been quite popular and it's doing very well. I wouldn't be surprised to see it rise in usage even more in the future, folks. This is just solid. Up next is an interesting one. Araquanid has been a little bit more popular in Gen 9 OU recently. Not as popular as Weezing Galar, but there have been four Araquanid uses in this tournament with an impressive three wins and one loss. And what's cool about Araquanid is that it seems to be the new face in the world of Sticky Web, actually perhaps outshining Rabombi, the former king of Sticky Web in Gen 9, and other options like Galvantula. A Raquanid has set it apart from these other Sticky Web setters with some, to be honest, pretty cool and unique advantages. A Raquanid is a water bug type Pokemon with the ability Water Bubble. Water type moves deal double damage and you can't be burned. Also, fire type moves are dealing half damage against you. Pretty cool ability in my opinion. I like this one. It of course gets Sticky Web, the Hazard that lowers speed on switch in, which is a good option on very aggressive teams that want to outrun the enemy as much as they can and break through with, with powerful, immediately threatening fellows. A Raquinid, unlike Rabombi, is not fast. It is slow, but it has impressive special bulk with 132 special defense. And that actually gives it some pretty cool early game interactions. It can live just about every hit in the game. There's not much that can actually directly threaten this. You can run a focus sash if you want to be even more safe, but it seems like a lot of people don't even bother running a Focus Sash because this can just live hits like a champion with that bulk and, you know, the water bubble ability, the pretty good defensive typing. So you can pretty safely just set webs against a lot of things and you can chuck a Kustap Berry on this to do one more thing after you live a hit. And a it has some pretty high value stuff up its sleeve for this. Mirror Coat is a cool option here, obviously taking advantage of your special bulk. You can live even super effective hits from Things like Zapdos and Raging Bolt and Iron Crown using Volt Switch or whatever. And a Mirror Coat reflects that damage back. You're probably in Kustap Berry range. So you get a high value trade early on. You, you just KO something. If they let you do that Mirror Coat, pretty massive. Then you can Sticky Web, set your hazard, and you're off to a great start. Araquanid also has Endeavor, which is a move that sets the enemy's HP stat to the same value as yours. So really good when you're on low health to use Endeavor to bring them as low as you are. And then you have the Endeavor plus Kustap Berry follow up with this. You Endeavor on the first turn and Sticky Web on the second turn. That's a pretty great way to open a game as well. Bringing something extremely low if the, maybe it's a physical attacker, so Mirror Coat would work, but you can still bring them down with you and start the game off with a serious bang. And then most players seem to just be running Surf as a simple water type move. Even though you have bad special attack, you're still hitting relatively hard with Water Bubble, extra damage, and Surf hits important stuff like Great Tusk, Iron Treads, Landorus Theory, and etc. So you could see this as actually a better Sticky Web setter than Rabombi in the current metagame. Rabombi used to be the superstar because it's fast. It has Stab Moonblast to hit Great Tusk, and it's just a reliable Sticky Web setter. But with the rise of Iron Crown, it feels a little bit dangerous to run Rabombi these days because Iron Crown has the double hit steel move that just hits through your focus sash and you can make web, but you don't get much else out of the Rabombi, which is a little bit rough. Rabombi can also have other poor lead matchups, sometimes have awkward interactions against rapid spinners, but a Raquinid on the other hand seems to be pretty favorable against all the hazard removers that are relevant. It puts many aggressive leads in an awkward spot where they don't want to play into the Miracrit or the Endeavor and just being bulky enough to be able to afford a Kustap Berry on this gives it way more early game value and short-term value, which is what you want on an aggressive team with Sticky Web. So this is a good fit and it's performing well with a lot of wins under its belt here. 
enhancing allies like Raging Bolt and King Gambit and Iron Moth who really appreciate the sticky web. I think moving forward, maybe Arak Winnet will be the go-to sticky web setter for those kinds of teams, which is a pretty cool thing to see because I'm a fan of this Pokemon person. Up next is Low Kicks, a fan favorite bug Pokemon and a very cool Pokemon as well. Low Kicks is a pretty impressive Pokemon for an early game bug, ending up in UU. That's more than can be said for most. And it's got some actual merit. This guy has the ability Tinted Lens, which is a really nice offensive ability. Your attacks deal double damage if they are not very effective. So it pretty much cancels out resistance. So you're always doing neutral damage, unless they times four resist. But even then you're doing way more damage than usual. And Low Kicks has a pretty nice offensive typing to take advantage of this with Bug Dark. You've got Knock Off. That's the best move Low Kicks has. An incredible dark type stab option that removes an item and hits really hard and even does considerable damage to resistances. You've got First Impression, which is also a great move. Works similarly to Fake Out. It only has priority and only functions on the first turn that you're in, but on that turn, it is a 90 power physical bug type priority move, which is really, really strong. And consider that this is unresisted by most things because of Tinted Lightning. So it's a really great revenge KO option for low kicks. And then you've just got some really solid stab options besides that u-turn of course can pivot and deal considerable unresisted damage which is very good and you've got options like throat chop sucker punch etc for dark type attacks low kicks though has pretty unimpressive stats with poor bulk below average speed and uh an acceptable attack stat but not that great compared to other stuff but just the good stab types the good stab options good selection of attacks and that ability tinted lens have given low kicks a lot to work with and I mean, people are using this quite a bit in the OUPL tournament recently with eight uses of low kicks and four wins, four losses. It's kind of a middling win rate here, but I think it's pretty noteworthy and pretty impressive that low kicks is getting some wins under its belt in Gen 9 OU. That stab first impression is actually really nice in Gen 9 OU where you've got threats like Dragon Dance Roaring Moon to worry about, Booster Energy Iron Valiant. You really appreciate that hard hitting priority option that can just revenge KO stuff and be a backup option against Sweep. Having low kicks on your team kind of improves consistency a little bit because you're going to block certain Pokemon from being able to sweep you. Even a defensive Terra won't fully save them because of a tinted lens. Knockoff is really nice on low kicks, of course, because it's vulnerable to Rocky Helmet and you're knocking off Rocky Helmets on incoming switches, helping to increase your longevity over the course of a game. The unresisted damage from U-turns also just adds up a lot. It's pretty considerable and it's just a strong idea to do unresisted U-turns, keep pivoting, keep pressure up. Low kicks works really well alongside Pokemon like Alamomola and Landorus Therian, who are able to defensively come in, do a slow pivot and bring low kicks in, where low kicks is free to, you know, first impression, U-turn or knockoff without having to defensively switch onto the field itself. With the support of bulky pivots like those, low kicks really shines and those Pokemon are feeling very, very good in this metagame. Alamomola and Landorus theory. And you can see how this is just a consistent, solid idea that would work in various matchups, whether you're up against a stall team, that consistent damage output and progress is going to add up over the course of the game. You're up against a hyper offense team, that first impression is going to come in handy a lot against all the fast, frail threats. So I think it sounds pretty good. And I wonder if honestly, could this rise up to OU? Maybe. Maybe. It does need a lot of support to help it get on the field from pivots, but those kinds of teams are really good right now. The, the slow pivoting teams. So we'll see what the future holds for low kicks. I think it's a very promising Pokemon that's doing very well right now. And I thought I'd highlight this one because this is kind of funny. This is actually the opposite of what I'm talking about. Because this is a Pokemon that was used a lot in this tournament. It's an unusual Pokemon, but this one keeps losing. It has a terrible win rate here. And I'm talking about Petcherunt. Petcherunt is a UU ranked mythical Pokemon. Pretty disappointing for a mythical in many people's eyes. And it's had a rough time in OU so far because although it seems like it's got a lot going for it with poison ghost typings, pretty good. The move Malignant Chain is great. 100 power poison move with 50% chance to apply toxic poison. It's got recovery. It's got parting shot for pivoting and the move Hex to synergize with Malignant Chain for double damage against status to enemies. And on top of all that, it's got the ability Poison Puppeteer, which actually causes any poisoned enemy to also become confused. So Malignant Chain will poison and confuse them at the same time. Pretty powerful idea, potentially. 
Petrant suffers from its terrible matchups into King Gambit and Goldengo. You can hit Goldengo with a super effective hex, but they're hitting you way harder. And Goldengo is immune to Malignant Chain and Parting Shot because of good as gold. And it's Steel Tapping. King Gambit, okay, you can Parting Shot Pivot against it, but you can't touch it with either Hex or Malignant Chain. So you're going to really struggle there. This guy also kind of blanks into Garganical, who is less common than those two, but still fairly relevant. So Petrant feels a little bit inconsistent actually doing what it wants to do in terms of you know pivoting spreading status there are common options that stop it from doing the very thing it wants to do and in fact i would actually say fezandipity is perhaps a more consistent pokemon with similar tools that can do a similar thing with the toxic chain ability a little bit better of a defensive typing and uh the ability to actually pivot against Goldengo and stuff, but who am I to say such a thing? Well, for whatever reason, people keep insisting on using Petrant in this tournament. This Pokemon has an unbelievable 21 uses and a 8 wins and 13 losses. And let me emphasize that some of these wins are just because Petrant was in a mirror match against another Petrant. There were three instances of Petrant mirror matches where both players brought Petrant. So of course one of them has to win. But I think if these guys faced anything else, it seems like the odds are against them based on the other results. So eight wins, but three of those are just automatic wins because one of the Petrants had to win. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. There seems to be a common theme in this Petrant replays of, you know, even if they do get a matchup where they're not up against Goldengo, the momentum generated from the parting shots doesn't seem to outdo the enemy. The Petrant can function all right, switching in against stuff, recovering up and, and getting some parting shots to switch out. But it always seems scared to select a malignant chain because there's so many poison and steel types in this metagame. Not even just King Gambit, but Iron Treads, Iron Moth, etc. So it always seems to just be clicking parting shot. And I can't help but wonder if that's all you seem to be able to do, maybe you'd be better served using something other than Petrant, like Landorus Theory and Alamomola, maybe even Pheasantipity, who can also pivot in a similar fashion. In most of these replays, Petrant fails to actually get much done. The enemy seems to just win in terms of their offensive pressure, and Petrant feels like dead weight. So. I don't know what uh, has come over the community here. They think, keep thinking Petrant's good. Maybe this is just a series of, of poor matchups in a row for Petrant. Could Petrant be better than this? I don't know. I look at Petrant and I see an extremely flawed Pokemon in the Gen Nano U metagame with consistency issues that I would think is outclassed by other options for pivots that can either generate momentum by pivoting or spread status by pivoting. I think both of those have better options to their name. Poison Ghost just feels rough in this meta too. I mean, ghost typing has a lot of advantages, but you can block rapid spin against Great Tusk, who just hits you with headlong rush. Okay, great. You can run an air balloon, but that's a temporary fix to a permanent problem. And, you know, Zamazenta can crunch you. All the things that you you probably want ghost typing for feel like they can just threaten you anyway. So I don't know about Petrant. I feel like Petrant seems really popular, but it's just not living up to what the community feels about it. What do you think though, folks? What do you think of these recent trends? Are these Pokemon going to be used more in the future, you think? Is Petrant just having a bad couple of days and maybe this is just... A bump in the road for this poison puppeteer. Is he going to make a comeback and actually start getting results? I'm doubtful, but it could happen. You never know. Let me know what you think of these metagame shifts down below in the comments. And thank you for watching.